Earlier this summer, I did a review of the Stella Pro Reflex line of lights, and I really liked them, with a few minor exceptions. Well, there's been an upgrade, and it's not a small one. Let's talk about it. Welcome to Behind the Shot, I'm Steve Brazel, and yes, let me start here, I've missed some shows. It's been my first real break in about seven years. The concert season this year took off kind of like pre-pandemic, and between that and life, I just haven't had as much time to produce shows regularly like I normally do. Hopefully the schedule will get back to normal soon, but I wanted to get this show out to you because it relates to a review that I did back in June. Quick reminder, the show notes for this show and any show I do are over at the website. It's behindtheshot.tv. Find the episode you're looking for, and I've got a little blog post, and all the links that I talk about are, are there as well. Uh, also, if you're watching on YouTube, right down below the like and subscribe button, I've got part of the description down there, and also I've got any links that I talk about down there. Speaking of YouTube, by the way, I've had some people complain in comments on other shows, hey, he doesn't get to the subject fast enough. I always put timestamp chapter markers down in the description on YouTube. So please feel free to jump to any section that you want. Before we dive in, a couple of disclaimer notes. The Stella Pro lights that I'm using in this show were given to me by Stella Pro Lights for the purpose of that original review. Likewise today, the upgraded battery handles I'm using, they were sent to me by Stella Pro for the purpose of this update. They have not paid me further. They won't get to see this video before I post it. These are just my personal opinions. And lastly, as always, if you want a crazy technical review, that's not me. There's a ton of those people out there. Go find them. These are just my honest opinions. So let's talk Stella Pro Reflex. If you already own one, hopefully this video will help you understand what the upgrade they just released means for you. If you're thinking about buying your first Stella Pro Reflex, I would suggest that you go watch that show from June, the full detailed review I did back in June. I will put the link in the description on YouTube or in the blog post at BehindTheShot.tv because... When I did that first show, that's a deep dive into the Stella Pro Reflex light, which has not actually changed, okay? The upgrade doesn't affect what I covered mostly in that show. I covered the lights themselves, the features, the optics, the mounting options, system compatibility, trigger compatibility, accessories, menus, all the specs, and did some testing as well. I don't wanna recover all the same ground here. That already exists, okay? So you may wanna go watch that first, but when you watch that one, of course, be aware the upgrade does exist now. We have a lower price than I mentioned in that video, and the power specs that I mentioned in that video are now outdated because this upgrade changes all of the power output, and that's what I'm going to cover here. Again, a link for that original show uh, in the description on YouTube or in the blog post. Let's do a quick refresh on the Stellar Pro Reflex light. It's a hybrid light. It can be a constant light like you'd use for either video or photography, or a strobe-like flash. I'm doing air quotes for the flash if you're listening to the audio version of this. And that's important to understand. These are not flashes in the traditional sense that we think of, right? There's no flash tube. It's a digital burst using an LED. And that matters because LEDs doing a burst aren't going to be as powerful, at least today they aren't, as a true strobe. The question is, for what you shoot, does that matter? For me, after playing with these lights, you know, for the first show that I did, the, the review show that I did, I loved them with a few exceptions. The upgrade has answered a number of those exceptions. It's made me rethink a few of those exceptions. And that type of thing I'm going to go into in my, my kind of final wrap up at the end. One byproduct of this whole thing that we're talking about today, the upgrade, is that Stella Pro consolidated the Reflex lineup into a single model. There used to be a Reflex and a Reflex S that had different features. That's no longer the case. Now, the only model is the Reflex S, and that's a great thing. It means that we consumers, if we buy a Stella Pro Reflex light, we get all the features right out of the box. It just makes it better for us. It's a better value. So let's talk upgrade. The upgrade for the Stella Pro Reflex comes in the form of this bad boy right here. It is an upgraded, more powerful, bigger battery handle. I'll show you a side-by-side -side here in just a minute. That gives you a lot just in that, okay? 
there is a firmware upgrade you need to do to the lighthead, but the features of the lighthead don't technically change. All you're getting is the new power from the battery handle. And to be able to use that, you have to do the firmware upgrade on the upgrade on the lighthead. But this means if you already own a reflex, to get this upgrade, you run the firmware, you just buy a new battery handle for about 300 bucks and you're in. It's actually a pretty good deal. Now, Stella Pro says this new hardware, this new battery handle, is going to deliver 50% more burst power, twice the runtime, and 50% more continuous power than the original battery did. Uh, the upgrade, by the way, also results in a light that's 50% faster. That's an interesting one, because if you watch the first video, you'll remember I said and showed a demo that the original Stella Pro light allowed you to shoot 20 frames per second. Well, with the new battery handle, it's 30 frames a second. Try doing that with a speed light. 30 frames a second without missing a beat. Even with that, even with the hardware upgrade, it's possible the headline is the lower price. When I did the first video, the Reflex S was priced at $1,096. Now that same light, the Reflex S with the bigger battery is only $849. That's almost $250 less for more light. And that's where my focus is going to be today. Looking at if the upgraded output for the lower price live up to what I'm hoping for. So let's jump on over and take a look at both batteries and kind of compare sizes, etc. This is the new Stella Pro Reflex battery. And if you compare it to the old battery, you'll immediately see a difference. The new battery is bigger around and a little bit taller than the old battery. And there are some other hardware changes as well. For a size reference, this is a can of Diet Coke. The can is a little bit bigger around than the battery, but they are about the same size. It's actually very, very comfortable to hold in your hand. Now, I mentioned there were some other hardware changes, and one of those is the quarter 20 on the bottom of the light. This opens up some mounting options for you. Originally, the old battery had a mounting option for you to put on their optional light stand mount. It had a set screw, but it's not a standard quarter 20. And that caused a little bit of a problem if you wanted to be creative with how you use the light. Well, for this, you can easily just take this on a light stud on your light stand and screw it on if it's one of those light studs that has threads on it. In fact, the other day, I put an Arca Swiss plate on the bottom of this battery handle, which I put on my Platyball, put on my Platypod handle, and put on top of a Platypod, and that opened up how I would deploy this light in a particular situation. So I think having just a standard quarter 20 dead center on the bottom of that handle is something I'm gonna end up liking. There is something else that they changed as far as the battery hardware is concerned, and that's this. The old battery had a mounting strap, and the idea was you could put it up against a pole using these cutouts, which I even called out in the first video as being really, really smartly designed. And then once you put it against a pole, you could take this strap, wrap it around the pole, and secure the battery to the pole. The problem is you're not always near a pole. So what they've gone with is this new hanging loop. And when I first saw the hanging loop, I thought to myself, you know, I don't know how durable this thing is, but the more I think about it, the more I think this is going to be a great upgrade. You could have a scenario where you have the light head in one spot, a three foot or longer USB-C cable, and the battery somewhere where you don't have a pole to wrap the strap around. Whereas with this hanging loop, no matter where this battery ends up, you just need a knob or a screw sticking out of the wall and you can hang this. And I think in the long run, I'm going to like this better. Of course, the durability will prove itself hopefully over time. Before we go out and test the new power claims, because that's one of the big things with this upgrade, 50% more power. Let's explore what the new specs are. In the old battery continuous mode specs, you got 6,000 lumens from the battery, and if you use their 100-watt AC power adapter, you got 9,000 lumens. Well, with the new battery, you get that 9,000 lumens from the battery. 9,000 lumens for 40 minutes, 6,000 lumens for an hour and a quarter, and about 3,000 lumens for two and a half hours. If you go to digital burst mode, you get more power from digital burst mode. The old spec, old battery. 12,000 lumens from the battery, and 18,000 lumens from the 100-watt power adapter. Well, now you get 18,000 lumens from the new battery handle. So I'm guessing the battery handle is 100 watts instead of the old 60 watts. 
18,000 lumens and 30 frames a second. You can get 10,000 full power bursts on one charge. So we're talking like 15 minutes of full power continuous, bursts at 30 frames a second. Try doing that type of stuff with your, you know, Canon or Nikon speed light and just watch the battery die. Basically what you're getting here from a battery and a firmware upgrade to the light head is the power that used to require a 100 watt AC power supply plus you're getting it all for about $250 less. It takes about an hour and 15 minutes from empty to charge the battery. And even though the battery is bigger, you're still talking this light fixture when it's all assembled is about two and a half pounds. So still very manageable, very, very portable. Again, if you want details on how to use the thing, go back to that video in June. I go through a deep dive there and you can learn how to use all of that type stuff. But for now, Let's go test the upgraded power claims and uh, see if it stacks up to the old battery. First up, like I did the last time, I'm gonna fire the Stellar Pro Reflex lights from a distance of about three feet at my expandable five by seven black backdrop. I'm gonna do this with each optic so that you can see, depending on the optic that we use, how the light dispersion changes and if there's a gain or loss of light. Now, if you watch the show in June, you already know the answer to this. Depending on the optic, there is a pronounced gain or loss of light. I measured these in June a different way than I'm gonna to do today. What I did in June was I took all the shots of the flash against the black backdrop with different optics at the exact same exposure so that you could see the bright ones versus the not so bright ones. I'm gonna do the same thing again today. But then I took those shots into Lightroom and if it was a super bright optic where it clipped, I pulled the exposure slider down until it stopped clipping. I measured how many stops that was. If it was something like the diffuser dome that's not as bright as the spot optic, it would generally be underexposed. I brought the exposure slider up until it clipped and I measured how many stops that was. It wasn't scientific by any means, but it worked and it gave me an idea of how many stops I was gaining or losing per optic. Today, I'm gonna to do it differently because I wanna be able to compare the new and the old battery. So I'm gonna use a Siconic light meter. The shots that you're gonna see of the different optics against the black backdrop from three feet are all the same exposure. One one hundredth of a second, ISO 200 at F2.8 at full power, okay? But what I'm gonna use the meter for, the meter's gonna have the one one hundredth of a second and the ISO 200. It's gonna tell us what the aperture should be for a proper exposure. I'm not gonna adjust the exposure for that. I want you to see the brightness changes, right? But the meter will tell us what a proper aperture exposure should be. And that will let us know the difference between the old battery and the new battery, which means we need to understand something. One stop of light is double the brightness or 100% gain. Now the claim here with the upgrade is a 50% gain. That should mean about a half a stop gain of light. My meter can be set to half stops and I didn't do it, why? Let me tell you. I was afraid that if they were a little off, if it was a little under, let's say reaching that half stop mark, that it would fall back to the lower full stop. And that's not fair if it's almost there and it rounded down or vice versa. If it was a little over a half stop, it would round up and make it look like it was a full stop difference. And I didn't want to do that. So I'm leaving my meter where I normally have it, third stops. And if it's Close, but not quite, it might round down to a third stop. And if it's a little over, it might round up to two third stops. But I think in the long run, using third stops is gonna get us a little closer to reality. I'm gonna do it with the old battery. I'm gonna do it with the new upgraded battery. And we'll see how many stops we gain with the new battery and if that 50% power claim holds up. So again, all the shots you're gonna see, same exposure against this black background. One one hundredth of a second, 200 ISO, F2.8 at full power, and the light is about three feet from the backdrop. And I should say, somebody on the last video complained about the exposures I was using. So let me explain why I chose this exposure. It does me no good to shoot the spot optic all the way through the line down to the flat port DM or the diffuser dome, which is much, much less light than the spot optic. And when I get to that diffuser dome, you on the video can't see it because it's so much less light, even though your eye could see it. 
So I chose an exposure so that at least when I get to the dimmest optic, you will be able to see it. And for, before somebody says it, that's why I did ISO 200 and not ISO 100. The only change for each of these shots is the optic. These shots are straight out of camera. I took the RAW into Lightroom, exported a JPEG, and here's what you're looking at as far as the backdrop is concerned. It's 56 and a half inches wide, or about four feet, eight and a half inches. That's about 1.4 meters. It's 37 inches tall is what you're seeing on the actual photo, or about three feet, one inch and that's roughly about a meter. Starting with the spot optic, which is a 12 degree optic, you can see the very bright center, and then a quick fade off. The meter again, set to ISO 200, one one hundredth of a second, the old battery metered at F18, and the new battery at F20. Now that's a one third stop gain, not one half or 50% as claimed. It could be that it's rounding down, it could be that it was close to a half a stop and round down. Still, with the spot optic, all the light is so concentrated to begin with, this one did not surprise me. Let's move to the medium optic. At 24 degrees, everything expands out much more evenly than the spot. It's got a bright center and a nice even fade. F13 is what the meter got for the old battery and F16 for the new battery. That is a two-third stop gain, so more than enough to qualify as a 50% power gain. Let's go to the medium wide optic. This one is 36 degrees. The lit area expands kind of the same as before, but notice how the light and fade are much more even when you get to the medium wide optic. The meter read this at F9 for the old battery and F11 for the new battery. Again, two-third stop gain. Let's go to the wide optic. This is a 65 degree optic. The light here flattens, creates a nice even fade off. And here's what the meter got for this. The old battery, 5.6. The new battery, F7.1. Again, two third stops. Let's move to the diffuser dome. This one is super even distribution of light, but it is dark. The old battery measured at F3.2 and the new battery at F4. That is a two-third stop gain, however. Lastly, the clear flat port DM protective cover that the light ships with. This one heads back the other way. It's brighter than the diffuser dome, a little bit brighter. F4 for the old battery, F5 for the new battery. That's a two-third stop gain. So let's recap. 50% more power would be a half a stop, and on all but the spot optic, we're getting at least that, measuring two-thirds of a stop on all the other optics. That's a big deal. For comparison, I did decide to test my Canon RT Speedlight. I didn't test it bare because I rarely ever use it bare. I use a flash bender as my modifier of choice. That's how I use my Speedlight when I shoot almost every show where I'm shooting for the venue. Photographing fans at the bar or staff scanning tickets or you know that type of a thing. And it measured F16 at full power, F9 at half power with the flash bender on, and F7.1 at quarter power. Now, when I shoot my speed light, I rarely use full power because I end up with recycle time issues on four AA batteries. If I'm shooting in TTL mode, I will usually use flash exposure compensation to pull the power down. If I'm in manual mode, I'm usually running about half power. So at half power, you're looking F9 with that flash bender on, and that lands right in between the Stella with the wide or the medium wide optic. So is it or does it have the capability of being brighter? Yes, but if you put a modifier on your speed light, there are some comparisons that could be drawn. Now, in the first review, there's one thing I didn't test and some people asked for it. I don't do video or I rarely use constant light in photography myself. But with the added power output, I thought I should try the constant power output and see what happens. So full power, constant power, old battery. I got a reading of F5.6. On the new battery, 7.1. There we go again. That is a two-third stop gain on continuous power. Now, this changes a lot. Half a stop or more of output, especially at the lower price point, makes these an option, in my opinion at least, for more types of creatives. Next up, I decided to go outside and see what these optics do 
parallel to a block wall. I want to see, based on the extra power, if we're going to get more distance or dispersion from these light optics with the old or the new battery. Again, all of these shots are shot at the same exposure, one two hundredth of a second, ISO 100 at f2.8. This one is the spot optic, then the medium optic, Next up to medium wide, here's the wide, here's the dome diffuser, and this one is the flat port DM. Lastly, this is their 30 inch Chimera softbox. So hopefully between the black background and this wall side view, you get an idea of the light dispersion and distance that you're going to get and brightness that you're going to get out of these lights. I did want to see what these you know, look like for a daylight portrait. Based on my tests in the first show, I didn't expect to be challenging you know, bright sunlight with these, but I did at least wanted to give it a try. And I, I probably should note here, after that first review, I found a number of videos online on YouTube of people testing these during a real shoot. Some of them actually really, really good. If you want to see the quality that these lights can do in the real world, head over to the Stella Pro website or go to Stella Pro Lights on Instagram. Check out on their website, though, the Stella Pro Academy. You've got people like Roberto Valenzuela, Jason Vincent, Scott Robert Lim doing all kinds of content on how these lights can be used. Now, for today, I don't have access to a model, so you get me running from behind the camera to in front of it to behind the camera to in front of it. And this first shot is ambient light only. The camera meter is at zero. And for reference, we're at 1 200th of a second, ISO 100 at F5. But I decided I wanted to underexpose by a stop in two thirds. So I'm at 1 200th of a second, ISO 100 and F9. And I brought the Stella Pro Reflex in, in digital burst mode, at full power with what I think was the wide optic, could have been the medium wide, I forgot to write it down, but at about quarter after five in Southern California with plenty of light around and a stop in two thirds underexposed, the Reflex actually held its own. I was actually pretty impressed with this. For reference, about a half an hour earlier, about quarter to five, this is one two hundredth of a second, ISO 100, F5.6, digital burst mode at full power. Next up, I decided to wait until it was dusk or at least darker out. So this is about 6.30 at night. And I wanted to test their Chimera softbox. I wanted to see what that looked like. I didn't have this for the first video. After the first video, a friend of mine said that he liked his. So I went and I actually bought it. You can see it in the upper left corner of this shot. And this is their 30 inch Chimera softbox with their Chimera Speed Ring, both of them specifically designed to be used with the Reflex. And the softbox is about three to four feet from me with the spot optic inside on the Reflex. And here's the result. You immediately can see how much softer the light is. The exposure here is one one hundredth of a second, ISO 1600 at F3.5. This was very low power on the Reflex intentionally. I wanted to kind of blend in with the darkness of the night. What's interesting when thinking about these shots with the various optics or the softbox is that the various Fresnel optics that you can change, spot to medium or wide, etc., they change the dispersion of light, but they don't change the size of the light source. The light source is actually still small. And remember, the hardness or softness of a light is based on the light source's size relative to the subject. The bigger the light source, the softer the light. The sun, while it is huge, is so far away that relative to the light source, it's small and therefore it's a harder light. It's not a very soft light. The reflex optics are small, so you can actually get a harder light, but with a choice of dispersion, which is kind of cool. Note the shadow from my arm in this picture, right? It's a little bit harder of a light. And because of the increased power, putting them inside a modifier like the softbox still leaves you with enough power to get a really nice soft light. Now, when I was doing the test against the block wall that I showed you earlier, it reminded me of a video I saw from Adorama TV on YouTube. Mark Wallace has a fantastic demo 
of the inverse square law. I'm going to put a link in the description below. Highly recommend you watch this video. If you're not familiar with the inverse square law, this is an equation that describes how light falls off over a distance, and specifically that it falls off faster the closer it is to the source. Now, if you're not into math, don't worry about it. Basically, here's what that means. Most people assume that if you double the distance from a light source, that you lose half the power. In reality, you lose 75% of the power. So if you're at full power at four feet from the light and you move to eight feet, you don't go to half power. You're actually getting a quarter power at that point. So here's what I decided to do. I decided to set all this up against the wall again and lay down a tape measure and pull out my meter to see if this inverse square law revealed any changes between the old and the new batteries. All of these are actually with the spot optic. And again, I'm using a meter that's set to one third stops. I'm not claiming perfect accuracy here before somebody leaves that in the comments. It's just a reference point that I thought I would show you. Comparing the new and the old battery over a distance across this wall, we'll start at two feet, F22 for both of them. So we're gonna call that our zero mark. If you double that distance to four feet, the old battery is F13. That's a one and two third stop loss in light. But the new battery is F14. That's a one and one third stop loss in light. You have gained a third stop of light over the distance. Let's double again to eight feet. The old battery is at F6.3. That's a three and two thirds stop loss in light. The new battery at eight feet is F7.1. That's a three and one third stop loss in light. So again, still gaining a third of a stop with this new battery. And when you get to 16 feet, the old battery is F3.2. That's a five and two thirds stop loss in light. The new battery, you actually gain two thirds of a stop. It's F4, that's only a five stop loss in light. So over the distance, the farther this light gets away from your subject, this new battery proves to be better all the way around and is gonna give you more light. Now I mentioned at the very start that when I first reviewed the Reflex, I liked these lights with a few exceptions. And while I definitely would have recommended the lights back then, the price and power were a serious consideration. At $250 less now and with clearly more usable power, these are a really great choice for somebody that wants a light that's portable, can do 10,000 bursts on a battery, 30 frames per second without missing a beat, and could work great as well as a video type constant light. No product is perfect. There are still some things that I would have if I were doing a checklist of my wish list, right? The light stand mounts, they still need a set screw. And it's a pain in the ass, to be honest with you, if you're gonna put them on and take them off. I'd love to see a stable, safe, secure mounting system for a light stand mount that was completely toolless and didn't need you to pull out an Allen wrench to put in a set screw. Not a major complaint, but it's something I'd, I'd have on my wish list. Some of the things that I mentioned in the first video still apply, and they would be great additions, but none of them are deal breakers for me, like TTL, Canon compatible triggering, bicolor RGB, easier gel mounting. All of that would be a value add, but at the new price and with the added power, I'm kind of okay without those. You get a ton of features in these lights at this lower price. There is one thing I wanna talk about. There was a comment I saw in a lot of the reviews of the original model before the upgrade, namely that while they were bright for a hybrid light, they weren't bright enough compared to real strobes and flashes. And that was an interesting complaint to me. The digital burst in these is not as bright as a real strobe or flash. My Canon speed light can be much brighter than these, but so what? First of all, after this upgrade, with the more power, that complaint is less than an issue to begin with. Plus, photography is the art of compromise to begin with. We trade things all the time. I trade higher ISO to get a faster shutter speed all the time in shooting concerts. I see these as powerful, portable, versatile lights. They do bursts, they do constant. And in fact, you can do both of those at the same time. You can actually have these lights set to a constant mode, but when you snap the shot, they burst with the higher output power. Can they be a studio light? Hell yeah, they could. But to me, that's not their, their main use model, okay? Comparing them with a speed light does make sense. Both are, are small, both are light, both are mobile. In that kind of side-by-side, -side, yes, 
speed lights could end up being a few stops brighter. But again, and I mentioned this earlier, nobody points out that with a speed light like my Canon 600 RT, you're running on four AA batteries most of the time, and you can end up with recycle issues as the battery drains. Even when I use these external battery packs I have that have eight AA batteries in them, if I use the speed light at full power for any length of time, I'm gonna have recycle issues. So what does almost everybody, myself included, do? They set their speed lights at half power or even quarter power to maximize the battery life and performance. Or if they're shooting in TTL mode, they use flash exposure compensation to lower the power. When you do either of those, you're already bringing the speed light power down closer to what the reflex is. Yes, sometimes having that extra power is nice, but it has the limitations of the battery refresh and that type of a thing. You can run a reflex on full power without refresh issues for 10,000 full power flashes in digital burst mode. I don't own enough AA batteries to make that work with my speed light. So overall, what do I think of the, the Stella Pro Reflex upgrade? Well, the Reflex S, which is again, the only model now, that's a good thing there, I think is better than ever. The new battery and firmware combined to make a very, very good light. The claim was 50% more burst power, 50% more continuous power, and I'll be damned, it actually delivers. We now have access to a 30 frame per second burst or continuous output all in the same light. Those things let me shoot in more difficult non-studio environments. It is one of the best form factors I've seen in a light. It's easy to handhold, easy to carry, easy to transport. They added that quarter 20 on the bottom. That's a great addition as well. For me, my priorities, which is not you, right? You're gonna buy what fits your use model. Your mileage may vary, that type of thing. But for me, my priorities are a flexible light that's small, lightweight. I want small batteries that deliver a ton of power over a long period of time that last. This upgrade answered a lot of the issues that some people had with the original Reflex design, and it does it for less money at $849. This is now almost $250 lower than a top-of-the-line Canon Speedlight, and they continue to be compatible with triggers from Profoto and Elencrom and Godox. The bottom line is this. At the new price and with the added power, these are a great suggestion, in my opinion, for somebody that's in the market for a nice, portable light. All the links that you need are in the blog post over at BehindTheShot.tv. And if you want to connect with Stella Pro Lights, check out their website. It's StellaProLights.com. You can follow them on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. It's at Stella Pro Lights. And if you're watching on YouTube, all the links and some of the show notes as well are down below the like and subscribe button in the description on YouTube. Thanks as always for watching. Be sure to join us next time as we take a look inside the mind of a great photographer by taking a closer look behind the shot. <laughs>